Good evening, happy Wednesday, and uh, welcome to your LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene or LA Phil Naz. And uh, please join us in our uh, online effort. <laughs> join our church every Sunday, 9 a.m., Wiley Chapel, Los Angeles. And here's our fellowship schedule. Tonight is Wednesday, 7 p.m., uh, Walk Through the Bible, Virtual Midweek. All right, so this is a 52 weeks journey of a lifetime. This is to ensure everyone in our church, all our members and attendees, uh, reads the entire Bible in a year. We want to encourage everyone uh, to read the Bible you know, every day and uh, uh, make it as a daily supplement you know, for our spiritual growth. So this is your Walk Through the Bible series. And uh, we're done with the... We started with the Old Testament, siempre. and uh, we're done with the Pentateuch <clears throat> from Genesis to Deuteronomy, and we're done with the historical books from Joshua to Esther, and then we're done with the third section of the Old Testament, the books of poetry from Job to Song of Solomon. Now we're, we are in our fourth section of the Old Testament, the prophets. So we're done with this, the law, Genesis to Deuteronomy, history, poetry and then and uh, we're here so major prophets so this will be our last day for the major prophets and then we'll go to the minor prophets and then we're done we're done in the old testament bilis lang so what are the major prophets we have isaiah jeremiah and lamentations no and then ezekiel so for tonight, well, we have our lesson number 20, the book of Ezekiel. <clears throat> Let's start. You see, Ezekiel was taken captive in Babylon by the famous king Nebuchadnezzar. Remember him? He was no? 597 BC. Nebuchadnezzar had first invaded Judah in um, in 606 BC, no, no, na capture niya in Jerusalem, carrying away several leaders, including your famous na young man, ang pangalan ay si Daniel. And this was the beginning of the 70-year captivity. Tagal din, grabe. Eight years later, in 597 BC, Jerusalem revolted because the Babylonian domination and Nebuchadnezzar invaded Judah for the second time. Ayan. Uh, taking King Jeho Jehoia Jehoia Jeho 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 <laughs> and uh, 10,000 statesmen, soldiers, craftsmen, and etc. Among whom was Ezekiel. By taking the most prominent men of the country, Nebuchadnezzar could better control the remnant left in Judah. So, ang discard nitong si Nebuchadnezzar is to take all soldiers, mga statesmen, mga politicians, mga leaders, mga craftsmen no, para magamit niya sa kanyang empire at para manghina yung kanyang uh, kinapture na nation. Nebuchadnezzar then made Sedekiah no, na bagong uh, hari ng Jerusalem. Okay? So, sino ba si Zedekiah? After only 11 years, Zedekiah, hoping for help from Egypt, rebelled against the Babylonians and King Nebuchadnezzar angrily invaded Jerusalem a third time. After a siege of about three years, he destroyed the city, the temple, and killed or deported thousands of people. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, then, in his mid-twenties, was a young contemporary of Jeremiah. Kasabay niya si Jeremiah. And uh, in Jerusalem, Ezekiel was uh, training to be a priest. So, nag-train na pala siya para maging priest. So, exile meant on... Uh, so, an exile, no? Ang ibig sabihin para kay Ezekiel, eh, nako, tapos na ang kanyang mga pangarap na maging na mag-serve sa temple ng Jerusalem. However, during the fifth year of his captivity, God called him to be a prophet. 
you know, while Jeremiah was preaching in Jerusalem, just before its fall, Ezekiel was preaching naman doon sa kabila sa Babylon kung saan sila dinala. God called uh, Ezekiel to explain his actions in allowing the Israelites to be taken into captivity. So yun yung role niya. Siya yung nag-explain no, ng action ng Panginoon. Noon, lalo na noon na, na sila ay na-capture ng mga Babylonians. The phrase, they shall know that I am the Lord, uh, is used nearly 70 times sa libro na to. The Israelites had been sinful and stiff-necked. Now, when other nations did what Israel had done, God destroyed them. However, God did not intend to allow Israel to be destroyed because of His covenant with Abraham. Ayun. So, ginagalang ng Panginoon yung covenant niya kay Abraham. He was punishing uh, Israel for their sin, but at the same time, was drawing them back to Himself. Yun, may push and pull. Uh, parang tayo lang sa buhay natin. Oh. Pinapanish tayo ng Panginoon pero hindi na drawback pa rin tayo. Because of the experience, uh, because of the experiences in captivity, the Jews always remembered the lesson God taught them. For never again, regardless of their sins, would they be guilty of idolatry. Ayan, tingnan naman natin ano-ano ni ba yung mga brief outline ng book of Ezekiel. So number one, Ezekiel's call and vision sa chapters 1 to 3. Number two, prophecies about the sins of Judah sa chapters 4, 24. And number three, prophecies about the foreign nations, chapters 25 to 32. And number four, the certainty of the return of uh, the certainty of the return ng Panginoon, chapters 33 to 48. All right, let's start. No? Simulan natin doon sa Ezekiel's call and vision. Nung tinawag siya ng Panginoon, ano yung mga na-visualize niya? At uh, ano yung vision niya? Kasi prophetic eh. Kumbaga, uh, si Ezekiel eh talagang uh, matatawag nating propeta. No? At masasabi natin na talagang ginamit ng Diyos. Sobra-sobra. Okay, so tingnan natin. Ezekiel is a book of visions. no? Beginning in the... F- very first chapter. Many of Ezekiel's visions are very sim- similar to those found na makikita natin sa book of Revelation. Now, the 30th year mentioned in chapter 1 verse 1, probably eh, yun daw ay edad ni Ezekiel. This was the normal age at which a priest took up his duties. So this would be a year of special significance kay Israel. Ano nga ba yung uh, vision no ni Israel at ano yung reaction niya? In Ezekiel 1.5, the likeness of four living creatures came from it and this was their appearance. They look something like human. So, yan yung kanyang uh, uh, kumbaga nakikita yung vision. Anong ibig sabihin? Ano? So, Ezekiel 1.28, the appearance of the brilliant light all around was like that of rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. This was the appearance of the likeness of the Lord's glory. When I saw it, ito yung kanyang reaction. I fell face down and heard a voice speaking. Mm-hmm. Alam nyo, beginning doon sa chapter 2 verse 1, Ezekiel is addressed as the son of man. No, throughout the book, the phrase simply means no, human being, no, tao, mortal man, parang ganun. Pero this is also the term Jesus used most often to refer to himself. Kasi nga, ang Panginoon, both God and man. So, God man siya. So, kaya tinawag niya rin sarili niya na son of man. So, uh, alam niyo, Dito naman sa chapter 2 verses 4 to 9 no uh, kumbaga Ezekiel's call were made clear no kumbaga tinawag siya sa anong purpose ba ng Panginoon basahin natin Ezekiel 
2 chapter verse uh, chapter chapter 2 verses 4 to 9 the descendants are obstinate and hard-hearted i am sending you to them and you must say to them this is what the lord god says whether they listen or refuse to listen for they are rebellious house they are a rebellious house they will know what a prophet has been among them But you, son of man, Ezekiel, no, do not be afraid of them, and do not be afraid of their words, even though briars and thorns are beside you and you live among scorpions. Don't be afraid of their words or discouraged by the look on their faces, for they are a rebellious house. Speak my words to them, whether they listen or refuse to listen, for they are rebellious. Eto alam niyo bilang pastor. Pinangahawakan ko to eh. Yung speak my words to them. Whether they listen or refuse to listen. Kasi every day I try to speak the words of God. I don't care if, if people will listen or they will refuse to listen. No. What I care about is obeying God eh. Baga, sundin mo lang, sundin mo lang. Ang trabaho mo is to proclaim the gospel. Hindi mo trabaho mo born again ng tao. Now, the Lord will convict people to listen. No? And um, some people will harden their hearts. No? Pero all you have to do, no? it's, it's, not really, it's not really that I don't care, pero in the sense that you need to focus doon sa panawagan mo. Just proclaim. Parang sinasabi kay Ezekiel, Open your mouth and eat what I'm giving you. So I looked and saw a hand reaching out to me and there was a written scroll in it. Yun, nilagay sa bibig niya yung scroll. Now, ito yung nagbabad siya na, Go ahead, speak my word. Go ahead, no, proclaim mo yung gospel. Right? So nice. Ganda. Alam nyo, the real responsibility of being a witness is found in uh, chapter 3, verse 18. No? Tingnan natin, ano yung sinasabi? If I say to the wicked person, you will surely die, but you do not warn him, you don't speak out to warn him about his wicked way in order to save his life, that the wicked person will die for his iniquity. Yet, I will hold you responsible for his blood. Naku, kaya nga, doble yung responsibilidad namin no kami mga pastor hindi lang kami mga pastor kay din na mga kristiyano nakakilala sa Diyos kitang-kita niyo naman sabi diyan no uh, if you don't uh, you don't speak out to warn him about his wicked way in order to save his life no sabi dito you will surely die but you do not warn him ibig sabihin importante na i-warn natin lahat ng tao tungkol sa kaligtasan, kung paano sila maliligtas, kung paano sila makakilala sa Panginoon. Amen? Tingnan natin, ano yung pangalawang outline? No, sa chapters 424, ano naman? Gawin natin na fast cut. Ano naman yung makikita dito? Alright, sa so chapter 424. No, in chapters 4 and 5, Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel enacts no, the siege and destruction of Jerusalem. The props for his drama are a large brick on which Ezekiel draws an outline of the city and a metal pan on which he bakes the flat loaves. And the water, I'm sorry, uh, the people watch as Ezekiel weighs out his meager measure of mixed grain and water ration and they get, uh, they get the message. Then he shaves his head to show Jerusalem's disgrace. All this represented how Judah would waste away in captivity until only a tiny handful, meaning the exiles, would remain. Ayan. So, kinalbo niya yung sarili niya, siyempre, para ipakita in disgrace na, na ginagawa ng Jerusalem. Na eventually, matitira lang ay yung mga mga uh, na exile. Okay. Uh, one of Ezekiel's very important visions no 
in this section a eh, vision of glory and godlessness sa chapters 8 to 11 uh, Ezekiel is transported to Jerusalem and set down beside the temple no what does the Lord show Ezekiel concerning the practices of the temple? Basahin natin. Ezekiel 8, 7 to 13. Then he brought me to the entrance of the court. And when I looked there was a hole in the wall. He said to me, son of man, dig through the wall. So I dug through the wall and discovered a doorway. He said to me, go in and see the detestable wicked acts they're committing here. I went in and looked and there engraved all around the wall was very kind of ab abhorrent, abhorrent thing, crawling creatures and beasts, as well as all the idols of the house of Israel. Seventy elders from the house of Israel were standing before them, with Jazaniah, son of Shaphan, standing among them. Each had a firepan in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising up. He said to me, Son of man, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness, each of the shrine of his idol? For they are saying, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has abandoned the land. Again, he said to me, you will see even more detestable acts that they are committing. Oh, no. So, dito makikita nyo yung, ano yun, no? yung glory ng Israel at saka yung godlessness din pinakita through vision kay Ezekiel. No? Sometimes pag binabasa natin ito, parang hindi natin maintindihan. Pero uh, once na, na lalo na paulit-ulit natin pasahin, no? mas ma-appreciate natin na, ah, okay, kumbaga prophetic, kumbaga in parang more of a uh, pictures and illustrations siya pinapakita kasi may crawling creatures and bees and everything pero bottom line pinapakita dito yung glory ng Israel at saka yung kanyang godlessness okay kaya sabi nga dito you will see even more detestable acts that they are committing in the future which is happening which ha which happened already and which is still happening un until now all right <coughs> pero <clears throat> sa uh, chapter okay tingnan natin medyo nawala ako sorry nahanap ko ang aking uh, notes so contrary to popular belief no, in Ezekiel's day and in our day God both sees and judges no in chapter 10, God's glory departs from the temple. Ayun. Malis na yung glory ng Panginoon sa temple nila. But regardless of what people think, no, alam nyo ba, na God is always fair when punishing a generation of His people. No, ano ba sinasabi dito sa judgment niya? Ezekiel 18, 19-20 But you may ask, why doesn't the son suffer punishment for the father's iniquity? Since the Son has done what is just and right, carefully observing all my statutes, he will certainly live. The person who sins is the one who will die. A son, who, a son won't suffer punishment for the father's iniquity. And a father won't suffer punishment for the son's iniquity. The righteousness of the righteous person will be on him. And the wickedness of the wicked person will be on him. Let's move on doon sa ating third part, yung prophecies about the foreign nation. So, nag-prophesy si Ezekiel sa mga kasalanan ng Judah, okay, yung tribe of Judah. Pero nag-prophesy din siya sa foreign nation. Medyo kakaiba to, no? Although prophets were usually concerned no, with their own nation, they often were conscious that God was the Lord of all nations. So, tandaan natin, ang mga propeta, lagi nilang kumbaga, nagpa-prophesy sila sa nation nila, sa Israel or sa Judah. Pero, huwag natin kalimutan na ang Diyos ay Diyos ng lahat ng nasyon. So, kanino nag-prophesy si Ezekiel? 
no tingnan natin kung kani-kanino no doon sa chapter 25:2 son of man face the ammonites and prophesy against them so nagprophesy si Israel sa mga ammonites nagprophesy si si Israel si Ezekiel no sa mga Moab okay so sino ba tong mga Moab ito yung mga descendant ni Lot yung pamangkin ni Abraham di ba so sabi dito look the house of Judah is like all the other nations nako kinumpara na yung house of Judah yeah so nagprophesy din si Ezekiel sa Edom, eh sino naman tong Edom na to? Mga Edomites. Eh, ito yung mga descendant naman ni Iso, yung kapatid ni Jacob. Ayan, so kamag-anak din nila, no? So nag-prophesy din siya sa mga Philistia. No, this is what the Lord God says because the Philistines acted in vengeance and took revenge with deep contempt, destroying because of their perpetual hatred. So sino naman yung pinaka sikat na Philistine no na maaalala natin na kalaban ni David. Siyempre, si Goliath. Yung naalala niyo ba si Goliath? Ang tanong, no, which modern day, no, country did the Ammonites, did the uh, Moabites and Edomites, uh, Edomites inhabit? The answer is the modern day kingdom of Jordan. When we read in the Bible about things that happened on the east side of the Jordan, we're reading about events that took place in present day Jordan. Ang tanong, etong Jordan ba? Sino ba to? Eh di ba ito rin ay eh, isa sa mga kumbaga um Uh, hindi kabate ng Israel hanggang ngayon. Pero naalala ko ng panahon ni Bill Clinton, no? nagkaroon sila ng uh, parang peace. Uh, uh, parang it's a, it's a pact na parang kasunduan uh, between Jordan and Israel na pinangunahan ni Bill Clinton. Na naalala, si Arafat pa ba yung, ano, nun, yung leader nila? Nun. Anyway, mag-move on tayo. Tingnan naman natin ano makikita natin. Doon sa prophecies about the foreign nations no as foreign nations sorry mali the certainty of the return ano naman na nangyari sa certainty of the return may kita to sa chapters 33 to 48 after revealing Ezekiel is the watchman of his people no eh, what does god say is the ray of hope He is to share with the nation of Judah. Basahin natin. Ezekiel 33 to 11. Tell them as I live. This is the declaration of the Lord God. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But rather that the wicked person should turn from his way and live. Repent, repent of all of your evil ways. Why will you die, house of Israel? Mm-hmm. At dito siyempre matatagpuan natin. Ano? Uh, in the most famous section in Ezekiel sa chapter 37. Now, in this vision kasi of the dry bones, Ezekiel sees a valley of very dry bones. You know, it was a picture of utter defeat. Bones of an army lying on the battleground, dry and unburied. So what does the Lord tell Ezekiel to do? No, dito sa mga bones na ito. Eh, basahin natin. Ezekiel 37.46 He said to me, Prophesy concerning these bones and said to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you and you will live. Wow, no, cinematic to. I will put tendons on you Make flesh grow on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. Wow! Lalagyan ng laman, lalagyan ng skin. Magka-come into life yung mga bones, yung mga dry bones. No? So what happens when Ezekiel does 
as God tells him. And what does it mean? Tignan natin sa 37, uh, 7 to 14. So, I prophesied as I been commanded. While I was prophesying, there was no, a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Woo! Sarap panorin si Gunto. Kung parang movie na cinematic to. In verse 8, as I looked, tendons appeared on them, flesh grew, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to it, this is what the Lord says. Breathe, come. No? Come from the four winds and breathe into this slain so that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath, the breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet. A vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Wow, no picture pala siya na Israel. Look how they say our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Lord God says, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them, my people, and lead you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am the Lord, my people, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is a declaration of the Lord. Whew. Grabe. Minabasa ko palang, na-imagine ko na. Grabe, na yung palang dry bones na yun, na naging tao ulit, na buhay, nagkaroon ng tendons, ng flesh, ng skin, na buhay ulit. Tapos, yun pala ay, ano, no? Kumbaga, picture ng Israel. Hindi kaya picture din natin to, na para na tayong dry bones, no? Pero yung breath ng Panginoon, yung kanyang breath, eh, uh, as He breathed to us, no? Eh, Pagkakaroon tayo ng buhay uli, Buhay na walang hanggan. Amen. Ayan, move, move on tayo. Eh, ito, medyo controversial. In, in Ezekiel 38, one of the most controversial chapters in the book, it deals with the battle of Gog and Magog. These two names are also mentioned in Revelation 20, 70, uh, 7 to 9. Some people, no? Some believe Ezekiel 38.2 is a definite reference to Russia and Meshech or present-day Moscow. Basahin natin. Son of man, 38.2, face Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, prophesy against him. Now, sabi ng iba, Eh, ito daw ay may kinalaman sa padating na panahon no na uh, manggagaling ang pwede posible na uh, magiging kalaban ng Israel ay ang Russia and Meshek no Magog no and Gog so kung nandito yung Israel ayan so napapaliputan siya ng mga Arab nations so dito manggagaling yung Gog and Magog. Binanggit yan sa Ezekiel. Binanggit din sa Book of Revelation. Sabi nila, Russia and Meshech daw to. Yung Russia nandito, yung Meshech, somewhere dyan, banda sa Middle East. No? Banda rito sa ibabaw ng Turkey. So ito yung Israel. Napapalibutan sila. So manggagaling daw dito. Yung mga Islamic country na yan. Libya, Egypt, Sudan, Saudi no uh, and dito Iran Iraq so Turkey so lahat siya na no eh mainit ang ulo sa Israel hanggang ngayon eh no pati tong Russia so ah uh, who knows we are in the end time so let's see no uh, hindi naman ako expert dito pero i'm just trying to interpret ko ano yung nababasa ko doon sa mga sinasabi ng iba Anyway, uh, malalaman natin lahat yan in the future at ipapaliwanag ng Panginoon. Pero for now, madami nagsasabing krisyano na it's a possible no? na Russia will play a big role doon sa end times. Anyway, 
Hi, nako, matatapos na tayo. While the Jews were in what seemed to be hopeless captivity during their time, eh, God declared in Ezekiel 39 to 48, no, yung verses, ay, yung chapters na yun, eh, He would restore them to their own land and set up the kingdom of David through the, uh, one greater than David. Ayan na nga yung present day Israel. Kung saan dumating ang Messiah, no? Uh, kumbaga, ito yung reference to the kingdom of the coming Messiah. Eh, Siyempre, alam na this. Yan ang ating Panginoon, si Jesus, from the line, from the line, uh, from the line of David. Alright. So, next attraction. Pag-usapan natin. Book of Daniel. Alright. So, see you next Wednesday. Let us pray. Uh, siguro maganda bigyan natin ng pagkakataon na uh, kung sino man nanonood sa atin na uh, uh, ng opportunity to accept the Lord no yung, yung tinatawag dito sa is sa, sa Ezekiel na coming Messiah no importante makonek kasi natin yung Old at saka New Testament kaya uh, let us take this great opportunity to accept him as our personal Lord and Savior let us pray Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I am a sinner. But I believe that you died upon the cross for me and you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend. Come into my heart and set me free from my sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hi, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagsama niyo sa amin ngayong gabi. And uh, see you tomorrow for our Nourish My Soul online devotion. Bye. God bless you.